Whether you're a beginner or an experienced Logic Pro producer, using project templates is gonna save you time and gonna keep you in the creative flow state. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through an easy to understand process to create your own project templates. But first, today's video was made possible by our friends at DistroKid. You already know that DistroKid is the best way for artists and producers like yourself to get their music onto the streaming services. They not only continue to add to their over 20 free goodies to help promote and enhance your releases, but they continue to add additional products to their lineup, including DistroVid and the new Mixia. So Mixia is the online mastering tool that makes it easy for even the most beginner artists to put the finishing touches on their track and have it mastered within minutes. Mixia is a simple three-step process. You upload your file, listen and customize it based on the volume and the EQ. From there, you can just download your fittest track and start planning your release. If you're a current DistroKid member, you should go try it out. And if you're not a DistroKid member, you can click on the link in the description, save 7% off your first year. And now let's build a template. All right, so tip number one to take into account here is what style of music you produce, because this is gonna dictate the tempo that you want for your project template. But also remember that you can make more than one project template. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to change this to 128 BPM. And that's gonna be the tempo that the project is always set at when you open a new one using the template. Now the next essential step is to choose three instruments that you use most often. So for our first of three instruments, we're gonna choose Alchemy. And let's just choose the Water Rings preset. Now we're going to create another software instrument. We're going to pick a bass from the library here under the synth, and let's just go with the 808 bass. Now we're going to create another software instrument with an empty channel strip. Then we're going to click on instrument and scroll down to drum machine designer. And the tip here is to use this to basically just host your kick, your snare, and maybe one other drum sample that you use frequently because this is a major key to making sure that you can get what you hear inside of your head sketched out and you can just go back and change the samples afterwards. And to take it a step further, you can always just keep the MIDI here with the snares hitting where they usually hit so that you don't have to do that. It saves you some more time. Now open up the mixer using key command X. Make sure to select the last track before the stereo out. Move over to options and select Create New Auxiliary Channel Strip. We're actually gonna make two of these and we're gonna create effect sends using the buses. So let's create bus six and bus seven here. And these are where you're gonna host your time-based effects like reverb and delays. Make the first one with the chroma verb and rename it reverb. And then do the same over here with the delay. Very important tip here is because these are effect sends, we want to make sure that the dry is at 0% and the wet is at 100. Depending on the plugin, it won't be wet and dry. It might just be mixed. So you want to make sure that the mix is at 100%. You can also keep your file browser open and have it set to your samples folder so that every time you open the project, it's there. For the master channel or the stereo out channel strip, what I recommend adding is number one, a loudness meter. That way you can check your mix as you're going. And number two, an adaptive limiter. This is really a preference thing, but for me, it makes sense to have it there so that you're doing some mixing into a limiter as you're going, which is gonna give you a better overall idea of how it's gonna sound at the end of mixing. Now that we have everything set up, you're gonna to go to file and you're gonna to go to save as template. Typically, you're gonna to wanna to title the template to the genre that you've built it for. Now for the bonus tips for those of you who stuck around for the end of the video. When you have created a track that you enjoy the sound of, you know the sounds work together, create a project out of those. When I created my first cyberpunk track, I made sure to make a template out of it. So now when I load this up, I know that I'm gonna have sounds that work together, which is why you can see that I kept the drum MIDI in here, even some of the effects like the swells and impacts. But now I know that I have not only bass sounds that work together with synth sounds and arps, etc., but I also have leveling that's already set. So for this, especially if I'm producing a whole album of this stuff for a music library, this really speeds up the process. So the key takeaway here is that 
workflow and productivity hacks are something that are probably more important to creatives than they are to any other type of work. I think a lot of us associate them with you know, business and entrepreneurs and things like that, but they play a huge factor in your success as a music producer, and it's going to help you to create more music, free up more time to build your brand, and keep you in that creative flow state. So let me know, what are some productivity and workflow hacks that you guys are using? So if you got something from this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I upload a new video every week. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.